Hello, everyone. Welcome to Creative Clubhouse Stories by New York City Children's Theater. My name is Miss Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a black woman and I'm wearing a black turtleneck sweater. I have green and red earrings on. I have curly black hair that goes past my shoulders and I am standing against a green background. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Today, we're gonna read a story and explore that story through theater. Now, I have a question for you. Do you know what month it is? That's right, it's February. And lots of things happen in February. What are some things that happen in February? Yeah. In February, we celebrate Valentine's Day. There's President's Days and President's Birthdays. And maybe it's even your birthday. But my favorite thing that happens all of February is the celebration of Black History Month. What are some things you think about when you hear Black History Month? Tell me, what do you think of when you hear Black History Month? Yeah, maybe you think of specific people or places or things. Now, do you know why we celebrate Black History Month or what it is? What's Black History Month? Why do we celebrate it? Those are some really good ideas. You're right. We celebrate Black History Month to celebrate the important ways that Black folks have made an impact on our world. We celebrate Black History Month to learn and remember the Black folks that have not been treated fairly in America and still aren't, even though Black Americans helped make our world a better place. And we celebrate Black history to thank those Black people who have worked hard to make the world more fair, more creative, more exciting. So for today's class, we're going to read and explore a story that celebrates someone who has made an impact on Black history. I'll tell you more about our story in a minute, but before we read, we are going to warm up our bodies our hearts and our brains, all right? The first thing we're going to do is take care of our hearts. And the way we're gonna take care of our heart is by taking a few deep breaths. Breath and breathing helps us when we are feeling really big things, big excitement, big sad, big nerves, big happy, big sleepy, big scared. What are you feeling today? What are you feeling today? Those are some really big feelings. Can you show me your feeling with your body on the count of three? Ready? Show me how you're feeling. Ready? One, two, three. Show me. Ooh. That's how I'm feeling today. Ooh. How are you feeling? That's a big feeling. And you know what will help with that big feeling is taking a few deep breaths. So we're going to breathe with a breath I called a butterfly breath. Sounds fun, right? Butterfly breath. So first you're going to put your hands out like this and wiggle those fingers. Very good. Then you're going to put your hands together. You're going to take a deep breath in and lift your arms up. Ready? Very good. And then you're going to hold your breath, open your wings. And then breathe out and lower them. Very good. Let's do that again two more times. Here we go. Arms out. Wiggle those fingers. Hands together. Take a deep breath in. Hold it while you open your wings and breathe out. And one more time. Reach those arms out. Wiggle those fingers. Hands together. Deep breath in. Hold it open and breathe out. Very good. And give your body a little wiggle. Ah, how are those big feelings feeling now? Awesome. The next thing we're going to do is take care of our bodies. 
Now, Black History Month is all about celebrating Black identities and culture. Black identities come from many different histories, cultures, and countries, and everyone has their own identity, and everyone's identities are important. So we're going to celebrate our identities now by saying, ready, repeat after me, you're going to say, I am smart, and you're going to reach those arms up. And if you don't want to reach your arms up or you can't reach your arms up, you can look up, you can think up, just think tall. So you can reach up or think tall and you're going to say, I am smart. Ready? Go. I am smart. Very good. And then you're going to reach down, 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 down and say, I am powerful. Ready? Reach down, 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 down. I am powerful. Very good. Then you're going to come back up and you're going to wiggle your body and you're going to say, I am creative. Very good. One more time. I am creative. And then you're going to wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself a big squeeze and say, I am kind. I am kind. Very good. Okay. Now, if you are taking this class with someone else, I want you to look at that person. Or if you're doing it alone, you can think about someone in your head. And I want you to think about that person or look at that person. And I want you to point and say, you are smart. And then with your other hand, I want you to say, you are powerful. And then with a wiggle point, I want you to say, you are creative. And then if you're standing next to that person and you can give them a big hug, or if you're thinking about them, imagine you're giving them a big hug and say, you are kind. Let's do it one more time. Ready? You are smart. You are powerful. You are creative. You are kind. Good job, and give a little shake, 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 shake. Ah, all right. Last but not least, it's time to take care of our brains. So we're going to take care of our brains by learning a vocab word. Vocab is short for vocabulary. That means the different kinds of words that we use. Can you say that with me? Ready? Vocab time. One more time. I need to see really big jazz hands. Here we go. Vocab time. Or maybe you do shoulders. Vocab time. All right. Vocab time means we're going to learn some new words and talk about them. So I'm gonna ask you some important questions. The first question I have for you is, what is a law? What is a law? Hmm, you have any ideas? Tell me. Those are really good ideas. All right. Laws are like rules. Laws are rules. What are some laws or rules that you have in your life? Show them to me, act them out. What are some laws or rules you have? Maybe your grown-ups have some rules for you. Like I have to brush my teeth before I go to bed or I have to raise my hand at school. Do you have laws or rules like that? There are some laws that everyone has to follow. Like when you're driving a car, the law is you have to put on your seatbelt, right? So there are lots of laws and rules all over. Who makes the laws and the rules? Who are the people who make the laws and the rules in your life? Yeah. 
maybe your parents or your grandparents, your teachers, your aunt and uncle, maybe even your siblings, brothers or sisters. Sometimes our government makes our rules, right? The rules that everyone has to follow. So the president. Yeah. Now, I have another question for you. What does, here's another word, are you ready? Another vocab word. What does the word fair mean? What does fair mean? Hmm. What does the word fair mean? Good. These are good ideas. Fair means that it's right or it's just, like justice. It's just. It's the right thing to do. Now, what about not fair? That one's a little easier, right? It means it's not fair, it's not right, it's not just. So we have fair and not fair. Fair, not fair. Do you think all laws or rules are fair? So I want you to tell me, think of all the laws and all the rules you know and think, are all laws or rules fair? Give me a thumbs up or not fair. Fair, thumbs up, not fair, thumbs down. Fair, not fair. Are all of the laws and the rules in the whole world fair or are some of them not fair? I see a lot of different answers. So laws and rules are tricky because sometimes the grown-ups in our lives, maybe our parents or the people in our home or the government or the police and things like that or school, they make laws and rules and we're supposed to follow them, right? But sometimes those laws are not fair. Just because a grown-up made the rule doesn't mean that it's fair. Now, sometimes rules and laws are important and they are fair and they're to help people and to keep you safe and to keep other people safe. But sometimes they're not. And in our history in America, we have a history of making laws that are not fair to everyone. And our story today is going to talk about that. But before we dive into our story, I want to ask you a few questions. And I want you to tell me if it is fair or not fair. Okay? Fair or not fair. So, since you're taking this class at Creative Clubhouse, I have some new rules for us, okay? And you're gonna tell me if this is a fair rule or an unfair rule, all right? The first rule I have for you is, if you are wearing a blue shirt, you cannot read our story today. If you are wearing a blue shirt, you cannot read our story today. Is that fair or not fair? Hmm, I see not fair. Why do you think? Right? Everyone should be able to read our story today. If you're wearing a blue shirt, that doesn't matter. Maybe that's your favorite color. You're right, that's not a fair rule. Thank you for telling me because now I'm going to change that rule. It doesn't matter what shirt you're wearing, everyone can read our story. Now, if you didn't tell me that that rule wasn't fair, I might not have known to change it. So it's important that when you hear rules that aren't fair, that you tell someone so that they change it. 
I think it's about time that I tell you what story we're reading today. Are you ready? Can you give me a drum roll, please? Bing. Today we're reading Ron's Big Mission by Rose Blue. Now, this story is about a real life pilot and astronaut named Ron McNair. The story is about when he was a child, like you. And this story takes place at a very special location, one of my favorite places to go, the library. Have you ever visited the library? Have you ever checked out a book before? Okay, I want everyone to act out checking out a book. How do you check out a book at the library? I want you to imagine that I am the librarian. Hold on. This is my librarian costume. Hello, my name is Miss Caitlin, the librarian. I hear you'd like to check out a book today. All right. Oh, you're checking out Ron's big mission? That's my favorite book. Can I have your library card? Thank you. Stamp. Make sure you bring this book back in two weeks. And freeze. Good acting. Okay, so let me take my costume off. We just acted out checking out a book. So you had to give your library card. I took your library card or the librarian took your library card and they stamped the inside of the book, stamp, and told you to bring it back in two weeks. So the library, you go there, you can pick a book, you have your library card that you sign up for, and then you can borrow the book for a certain amount of time, usually about two weeks. But in our story today, Ron's going to go to the library and something, is going to happen. Now remember, if you hear a rule or a law while we're reading our book that's unfair, you got to tell me about it, all right? So if you think something's fair, thumbs up. If it's not fair, you go, not fair. Can you try that with me? Ready? Not fair. I think we're ready. Oh, one more thing. Now, of course we know, not fair if we see something that's not fair. But if you see someone in our book, if you see a character in our book doing something big, bold, brave, or beautiful, I want you to give them a big cheer. So if you see a character in our book doing something big, bold, brave, or beautiful, I want you to go, woo! And give them a big round of applause. Can we practice that? Ready? One, two, three, woo! So now you have two things you can use while we read. Not fair and woo to celebrate. Here we go. I'm going to share my screen so that we can all see the story. Here we go. Ron's big mission. And here is a picture of a little boy. He has black skin and dark curly hair. And he's looking out the window at a big full moon. And above his head is a mobile and it has different planets hanging on it. You're up early this morning, Ron. What's the rush? asked Mrs. McNair. Come and have your breakfast. I made some oatmeal. I have to go, Mama, said Ron, tying his sneakers. I have something to do this morning. You always have something to do, said his mother with a smile. Just be home by lunchtime, okay? And there's Ron tying his shoes at the kitchen table and his mom cooking up the oatmeal. And she's wearing a red and purple dress with matching red earrings. 
Ron was nine years old. That morning, he left the house with a plan. He'd been thinking about it for a long time. It was a beautiful South Carolina summer day and Ron looked up at the blue, blue sky. Someday, he thought, he would be up there flying a plane. He wanted to be a pilot when he grew up. But today, Ron had something else on his mind, something very important. And there's Ron wearing a yellow and orange shirt looking up at a blue sky with an airplane. Ron walked down the street as fast as he could. He didn't want to be late. Hi, Ron, the grocer called from the front of his store. There you are, just in time for a donut. Morning, Mr. Douglas, said Ron. Thank you, but there's some place I've got to be. And Ron kept walking. And there is the grocer. Mr. Douglas with donuts and Ron is walking by. He's got somewhere to be. Down by the schoolyard, Ron saw his friend Carl shooting baskets. All right, you made it, called Carl. Hi, Carl. I wish I could stay, but I've got something important to do. Ron kept walking. When Ron got to the lake, City Public Library, he stopped. This was it. He was hot from walking so fast and he was nervous too. Can you show me what nervous looks like in your body? Can you show me what nervous looks like? So Ron's feeling a little nervous. He took a deep breath. Oh, can we all take a deep breath together? Ready? Oh. He lifted his head high and went inside. The head librarian, Mrs. Scott, was busy getting ready for all the people who would be using the library today. She looked up to welcome her first visitor. Mrs. Scott smiled at Ron as he walked in. He was her best customer. Ron gave a little wave to Mrs. Scott and went right to the shelves. So there's Ron walking into the library and we see the head librarian, Mrs. Scott, waving and she's wearing a green skirt and a yellow jacket. And there's another woman wearing a blue skirt and jacket. And she's also um, at the front desk of the library. She has a book in her hand. It took Ron a while to find some books. He always looked for books that showed children who looked like him but that was hard. There were not many books about black kids on the shelves. Hmm. So Ron went to the library looking for books that featured kids like him, that looked like him with dark skin, but he couldn't find them because there wasn't a lot of them. What do you think about that? When you go to the library or look at books at your school, do you see characters that look like you? So I heard yes, no, sometimes. If at your library or your school, you don't see books with children or people that look like you, ask to get some new ones because there are so many great books that feature all different kinds of characters. And it's important that everyone can see themselves in the books that we read. Just like Ron was looking for a book with someone who looked like him. Let's get back to our story. At last, Ron found some books on airplanes. Remember, Ron wants to be a pilot. He took the books and started to walk to the front desk. Ron felt nervous and his hands felt a little sweaty, but he knew what he wanted to do. Hmm, let's pause for a minute. Why do you think Ron might be feeling nervous right now? Why might his hands be a little sweaty? Do you have any guesses? Okay, make a guess 
and put it in your head. Once you have your guess, put your hands on your head. All right, let's see if your guess is right. Mrs. Fielding, a white lady who often, who was often in the library, stopped him. You can give me the books and I'll check them out for you, Ron, she said gently. No, thanks, Mrs. Fielding, Ron said. I'm going to do it all by myself. But Ron, she started to say. Hmm. Why do you think that this woman offered to check out the books for Ron? Hmm. Let's see. Ron was already on his way to the front desk. He put the books on the counter. I'd like to check these out, please, said Ron. The desk clerk didn't look at him. Didn't she hear me? Ron wondered. Ron knew what he had to do. And there's Ron at the front desk with the woman who's wearing the blue jacket and the blue skirt. And she's writing something on a piece of paper and Ron is trying to check out the books, but she's not looking at him. Why do you think she's not looking at him? Let's make another guess. Why do you think that this woman is not looking at Ron when he wants to check out these books? Those are good ideas, let's see. Ron jumped up on the counter. He wanted the desk clerk to know he was serious. I'd like to check out these books, he said quietly. At first, the desk clerk and Mrs. Scott just looked at each other. You know you can't check out books, Ron, said Mrs. Scott. You can read them here. That's the rule. Only white people can check out books from the library. Okay, I'm hearing some not fairs, not fair. Does that sound like a fair rule to you that only white people can check out books from the library? No, not fair. But in our story at this time, that was the rule. Everybody had to follow that rule that only white people could check out books. People of color, black people, brown people, anyone who wasn't white couldn't check out books. That's not fair. Let's see what Ron does about it. Ron looked at them, at Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk, but he would not budge. I always read them here. Today, I want to check them out. Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk didn't know what to do. Ron wouldn't get off the counter. People were staring. Finally, the desk clerk called the Lake City Police. Two policemen came right over. Let someone check out the books for you, son, said one of the policemen. You know the rules. But Ron just shook his head. He would not budge. Okay, let's pause. This is kind of a heavy moment. This is a big moment. So let's take care of our hearts by taking a deep breath together with our butterfly breath. So we're gonna pause, we're gonna put those hands out, wiggle those fingers. Hands together, deep breath in. Hold it, open your arms and breathe out. Let's do that one more time. Hands out, wiggle those fingers. Hands together, deep breath in. Hold it, open and breathe out. Okay, give a little shake. Ron is telling the people at the library, is telling these police officers that this is not fair that this is not a fair rule. And that is big, that is brave, that is bold, and that is beautiful. So let's give Ron a big round of applause. Ready? Woo! And big round of applause. I think Ron deserves two. Woo!
it's a hard thing to do to stand up for yourself and tell grownups, especially that that's not fair or that's not right, but Ron is doing it. How would you feel if you had to stand up for yourself like Ron is right now? Show me in your bodies. How would you feel? Ready? One, two, three, show me. Good, I see some strong poses. I see some nervous poses. I see some excited poses. I see some angry poses. I bet Ron is feeling all of those things too. Let's see what happens. Let's jump back into our story. Ready? One, two, three, read. Now, Mrs. Scott called Ron's mother. Mrs. McNair came to the library very quickly. I know how you feel, baby, she said, but you have to follow the rules. I can't, Mama, Ron told her. It's wrong. The rules are not fair. Why can't I check out books like everyone else? No one said anything. Mrs. Scott looked at Ron. She thought about all the times that Ron came into the library and all the times he sat at the table for hours looking over so many books. He was her best customer and she knew what she had to do. And here's Ron standing on the desk saying, no, this is not fair, even to his mom. That is brave. Mrs. Scott walked back into her office and started writing. Ron wondered what she was doing. Hmm, what do you think she's doing? So we see her here and she's writing something on a small piece of paper. Mrs. Scott returned and handed Ron a library card, his library card. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and smiled. As he jumped to the floor, he thought he saw her smile too. I'd like to check out these books, please, he said, handing the card to the desk clerk. The desk clerk took his library card and stamped the cards in the back of the books. These are due back in two weeks, she said. Ron smiled. Thank you, he said. He tucked the books under his arm and took his mother's hand. Together, they walked home. Ron couldn't wait to get to his room. And there's Ron looking up at the sky, pointing at an airplane. And he couldn't wait to get to his room and open to page one. And there's Ron on his bedroom floor with his books that he worked hard to check out from the library and it's a book full of airplanes. And here is a picture of the real Ron or Ronald McNair. Ron grew up to be an astronaut and a physicist, just like he dreamed. Let's give Ron a big round of applause. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! Thank you, Ron, for making such a big impact on our history. And that's why we're celebrating him this Black History Month. Let's take a deep breath together. Ready? And one more. Okay. Ron was very brave in our story. He stood up for himself. He told the grown-ups that that was not a fair rule. And then he made it more fair. And because of people like Ron, other children, other black children, other brown children, other children of color were able to get their library cards and check out books just like Ron. But someone had to tell them that the rule wasn't fair. So I have a question for you. Who were the helpers in our story? Who were the helpers? Who helped? 
So definitely Ron, right? Ron helped himself. He helped his community. He helped other people of color. And there was one more helper in our story. There was one more helper. That's right. The librarian, right? The librarian was the other helper. Because what did she do? What did Mrs. Scott do? Yeah. She listened to Ron. She said, you know what, you're right. This isn't a fair rule. And she saw that it wasn't fair. And then she changed it. She took a step to change it and gave Ron his own library card, even though the police, the desk clerk, his mom, everyone was saying it was the rule. So first, Ron made a change. And then Mrs. Scott made a change too. So remember, there may be rules that are not fair and it's our responsibility, my responsibility, your responsibility to stand up and say, that's not fair. And it's our responsibility to listen when someone says a rule isn't fair and help change it. Now, to celebrate Ron and all of the amazing things he's done, I want to play a little game. How does that sound? Okay, here we go. This game is called Astronaut Zoom. Can you say that with me? Ready? Astronaut Zoom. I'm going to teach you a few different poses, and then I'm going to call out the poses really fast, and you'll have to make them. And you're going to try really hard not to make a mistake. But if you do, that's okay. So the first pose is astronauts ready. And this is our astronaut ready pose. So hands on your hips, look up to the corner like you're looking at the stars. Good, so astronauts ready. Good. Our next pose, I will say three, two, one, and then you have to blast off. So you're gonna jump, ready? One or three, two, one. Blast off, good job. Next is shooting star. And it goes like this, shooting star. Like you're watching a star shoot across the sky, ready? Shooting star, very good. And one more, this last one is no gravity, just like in space where there's no gravity just like that no gravity good job let's review ready astronauts ready okay three two one blast off good shooting star shooting star and last one no gravity all right, are you ready to play? Here we go. First pose is three, two, one, blast off! No gravity. Shooting star. Shooting star. No gravity. Astronauts ready. Shooting star. Astronauts ready. No gravity. Three, two, one, blast off! No gravity. Astronauts ready. Shooting star. Oh, did I trick you with that one? <laughs> Good shooting star. Three, two, one, no gravity. Oh, I almost tricked you there. Three, two, one, blast off! Astronauts ready? Shooting star. Three, two, one, blast off! No gravity. Astronauts ready? No. Astronauts ready? No gravity. And three, two, one, 
Blast off! Very good, and shake it off. Friends, thank you so much for reading, playing, and exploring with me today. We took care of our brains, our hearts, and our bodies, and we learned that sometimes not all the rules are fair. So it's up to us to help change them. Thank you all so much. And I hope to play again with you real soon. Have an amazing day.